said, my name is Alex, and I am your stereotypical dreamer. I'm always coming up with ideas, campaigns, businesses. It's just the way my mind works. And you might be thinking, oh, that's nice. I guess she's always had people in her life tell her that she can do whatever she wants to do, which I have had people that have been very supportive. But I think a lot of what I've achieved in my life is because people told me this, you can't do it. Who has told you before that you can't do something? Yeah. Unfortunately, it happens all the time. It's a really ugly part of humanity. We have this knee-jerk reaction to tell each other, you can't do that. Because we have a very set view of what's possible based on what we've seen done, or what we've done, or what we think can happen. And I think that's really unfair. And this isn't to say that every idea you should come up, that you come up with, you should go for, or that you shouldn't listen to advice. But I think you should, if you have an idea for something that you think can make a difference, you should go for it. And if someone tells you you can't do it, you should do whatever you can to prove them wrong. So I had one of those ideas. And that idea was to dress up like a grilled cheese sandwich and walk around campus trying to raise money to end world hunger. And uh, there was a lot of people that said, Alex, that's so weird. You can't walk around campus dressed like a girl's cheese. You'll never make any friends, you dork. And it's like, OK, I want to do it anyway, because I want to start this organization called Feel Good, where we'll make girl cheese sandwiches, and then we'll sell them in exchange for donations and world hunger. So I did it anyway. And in three years, we raised several thousand dollars. We hosted two benefit concerts. And we helped these programs around the world that empower women and work to fight poverty. And I'm glad to say that five years later, that organization is still going on campus. And that has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with the people that have followed me, dreamers that believe that something as small as a grilled cheese sandwich can still make a difference. But what if I had listened to the people that said, you can't do that? There were people that said, Alex, you just transferred here. You don't know anyone who's going to help you. And you can't start a restaurant on campus, your competition, what about the health code? So thankfully, I'd already thought of all of those things. And I had started asking people in my classes if they wanted to help me. So I had a list of volunteers. I printed out the health code. I highlighted things. I came up with a whole plan. I came up with a plan of how we were going to promote this, came up with the menu. So I printed all of this out, and I put it in a binder. And then I made a second copy for the director of dining services here at WKU. And I went in and met with him and pitched him the whole thing. And um, it went really well, obviously, and he told us that we could do it. So I found that if you are prepared, people will look at your plan instead of your age. And sure, I'm sure he really doubted you know, whether this was gonna, going to succeed. But I had thought out the potential problems that could come up. So I felt more confident in facing this. And I had already done the first the biggest task, which is getting the haters out of your way when you're trying to get something to happen. So did we end world hunger with grilled cheese sandwiches? No, but we made a difference. So, but I'm not saying every time I wanted to wear a crazy costume or had a big idea, it worked out. That's definitely not true. Um, for instance, when I was four, I decided to be grapes for Halloween, uh, which is actually a terrible idea because you can't sit down and you can't hold out your bag for candy when you're covered in uh, purple balloons. So it wasn't a smart idea, but that wasn't even the worst one. Uh, the worst idea I've ever had for costume was dressing up as a giant cotton swab and walking a half marathon. Um, seemed like a great idea at the time, and then it rained, and I had to wear this really cool umbrella hat. And then I finished it, but if you can imagine how heavy a giant cotton hat gets after three hours of it being rained on, um, you can imagine that it was a little, it was a little rough. So even though I was smiling, it, it wasn't great. And you're probably super confused as to why I would be wearing a cotton swab outfit, which is totally fair. But a cotton swab, a cheek swab, is what you do to join the bone marrow donor registry. And this became very important to me because my little sister Sam here was diagnosed with a disease called severe aplastinemia while I was a student here at WKU. And it's, it's similar to leukemia, and she was given about six months to live when she was diagnosed, unfortunately. And she was told that she would need a bone marrow transplant to survive. And as her only sister, I had the best chance of being her donor. 
But unfortunately, I wasn't a match. And I actually got that call that I wasn't a match when I was wearing that girl cheese costume, um, which is probably pretty good that I was wearing it, because otherwise I probably would have just dropped to my knees, because as you can imagine, if you have siblings, um, hearing that you can't save your sibling is one of the worst things they can ever tell you. So unfortunately, I wasn't a match, and Sam didn't have a match out of the 28 million people in the world that were on the donor registry either. So uh, we, had, we had to do something about this. We had to try to find her a match. So we created Sharing America's Marrow, or SAM, Sam, in honor of my sister. And we started signing up bone marrow donors. Um, and you would think that after I had done feel good, or after you achieve one big crazy dream, then people would stop doubting you, or maybe think that um, you can do whatever. But there are still doubters out there, and um, sometimes you kind of have to train people to stop doubting you. But because I had done feel good, I had connections on campus, and people let me host donor registration events here at WKU. And we signed up several thousand people. Um, which was great, and uh, we even had some students go on and donate, and the first person that I knew that donated was the Vice President of Feel Good, which was one of the first persons I ever asked, so that was kind of cool how that came around. Um, but raise your hand if you have no idea what I'm talking about when I say bone marrow. Anybody? Okay, that's good. Or how many of you have heard that bone marrow donation is super scary and painful? That's probably more what you've heard, um, which is unfortunate because it's, it's been in movies like Seven Pounds and in, on TV shows like Grey's Anatomy and House as being this really scary, painful procedure. Um, but it's, it's really not, and um, I, I'll explain more about it. But we wanted to do something big. We wanted to sign up more bone marrow donors, so we said, let's go to all 50 states and try to sign up 50,000 bone marrow donors in 2015. And the doubters who are always there, said, 50 states, that's a lot of states. And we're like, yeah, that, there's 50. And then they said, well, what about Alaska? You're not going there. I said, well, yeah, that's part of the 50, so I think we're going to go there, too. And like, well, you're not going to Hawaii, obviously. And we're like, no, oh, yeah, that's, that's the 50, so we're going to do that, too. So, um, so we, we were, we were going to go for it, but there, there was a lot that got in the way. And the first thing is that bone marrow is so... Um, misunderstood and feared. So like I said, all it takes to sign up to be a bone marrow donor is swabbing your cheeks with a, a cotton swab that types your DNA, which is what is used to match bone marrow donors and patients, and then you have to fill out a form. So that's what we were going to do as we traveled around the country. Super easy. So if you are asked to donate, it's not this super scary experience that you think it is. Um, if you're asked to give bone marrow, which is very rare, it's under anesthesia, so you don't feel any pain, but most donors actually just give blood, and they cycle out blood stem cells and so, like this girl here, who's obviously not screaming in pain, she's just smiling and donating. Um, it's really not that big of a deal for you, but it is a big deal for that patient, because you could save their life. Um, this is Connor, who is a WKU patient, who went on and donated, and he's watching Netflix as he gives, so it's pretty easy. So we were up against a lot. We were planning a 50-state year-long road trip. We were planning on stopping in 160 cities, and uh, we were going up this big, against this big, Thing of uh, this fear about bone marrow. So we were, we were a little scared, um, but we, we were going to do it anyway. But this actually, almost all this didn't happen because we couldn't get a vehicle to go around the country. Uh, we needed a van, and sure, we could have tried to buy one, but we had started a nonprofit. We were raising money. We really needed help. We needed someone to donate one to us. But we just couldn't get a car dealership on board. Finally, we got a meeting with a, the owner of a car dealership, and I learned from my former life as a girl cheese to be prepared and um, think everything through. So I thought of everywhere we wanted to go, and I printed it out in list form and route form, because in map form, because some people are visual learners. Uh, we thought of a budget, we had contacts, we did press releases, we had everything, and I took this into this meeting with this car dealership guy. And I, I was pretty, I was shaky and I was pretty nervous. And um, I pitched him the whole thing and I, I told him about how the good work that we were doing can actually bring him business because as you probably know, it's always a good idea to try to tell somebody how whatever you're doing benefits them. It's just human nature. So I pitched this whole thing and I'm feeling pretty good about it because it sounds pretty cool. Um, I'm, I'm sweating a little bit, but just like in one armpit, so it wasn't like, super bad. Um, and, and, he seemed happy about it, and he said, this is great. Yes, did it again, it's awesome. And then he kind of looked around the room, 
So I go, who's the adult in charge? And I'm like, ooh, wow, um, me. Uh, and it, it was really heartbreaking because he had just judged me as soon as I walked into the room. He heard my higher pitched voice, which I can't help, and uh, assumed that I was incompetent or that I wasn't able um, to make this big dream happen because he thought I was too young. And so that, that was pretty heartbreaking. And we really learned that no matter how prepared you are, people are, might judge you unfairly. And I really think that no matter how many times your body has gone around this earth, I don't think that has anything to do with your ability to succeed or make an impact in this world. But unfortunately, there are people that think that. Um, so he, he said to me, now I'm sweating everywhere because I'm so nervous. And like this really isn't going well. And um, he said, okay, who's driving you all? Again, ouch, um, I've had a driver's license at 10 years, for 10 years at this point. So um, I just said thank you so much and left because there was no way I was going to um, try to keep changing his mind. But ironically, they called us back a little while later and said, we wanted to work with you, but we turned him down because no amount of money is worth working with someone that makes you feel so small. Um, you could find another way. Um, you can find someone that believes in you. So even though he basically said you can't do it, we did it anyway. Uh, we got a van. We named her Maggie for no reason. She just looked like Maggie. And uh, we took this van and we went to all 50 states. Uh, this is us in California. We hosted 193 events in, in a year. Um, we did an event on Wall Street. We went to over 100 universities to sign people up. And we did events at festivals, concerts, um, just really anywhere we could get in front of people. We had a lot of really good press. We were in magazines. We were on the Steve Harvey show, which was pretty crazy. Um, I was blacked out the whole time because I was so nervous, but I think it went well. Um, and then and we saw some really cool places around the country, too. This is me at the Grand Canyon. We went to a lot of national parks. And I wish I could end it there and be like, yeah, it was all amazing and great, but that's just not the reality. And I, I don't think that would be fair to tell you guys that as soon as you make your big dreams come true, that it's all glamorous and pretty. It really wasn't. Um, and I wish I could tell you that every event looked like this, where we had cotton swabs and, um, and forms everywhere, because we're signing so many people up. But actually, we got rejected a lot. Like I said, people hate bone marrow. They would scream when we said, do you want to be a bone marrow donor? And they would run away, because um, there, there is this fear. So we got shut down a lot, uh, and it's, it's pretty hard, especially when you're standing next to your little sister, who thankfully she is, she's still here because of a, an alternative treatment, but she's still sick. And to have people say no to her face, that hurts. So um, not everyone was, was on board with this, and that was pretty painful. And I wish I could tell you that, you know, living out of a van is super carefree and fun. And, you know, there is good sides of it, but we also basically lived at gas stations, which isn't the best place to live, as you can imagine. And we, our van broke down like every other week, so, you know, it wasn't great. And he, I wish I could tell you that we, our hair was done all the time, and we took cute pictures, and we were so happy, and that did happen. But we also looked like a mess most of the times we lived out of a van. And I wish I could tell you that there were pretty sunsets every night and we got along, but sometimes we were in gross parts of town and it was raining and cold and we hated each other. We were so annoyed after spending a year in a van with each other. But you know what? We are still friends today. We actually all live together now. And um, we, we made a difference. We didn't sign up 50,000 people. We didn't find my sister a match, but we signed up 24,000 people and we found 401 matches for other patients. So even us failing to reach our goals still made a difference. And I really think that if you shoot for something big, you can still make an impact because you're still making progress. You're doing something, even if you don't reach that goal. And there's this saying, you know, shoot for the stars because even if you miss, you'll land on the moon, which is super cheesy. But I also really believe it's true. Why wouldn't you just go for it? And not listen to the people that tell you that your dream is too big or you're too young to make it happen. Why wouldn't you at least try? So right now, um, I'm making a documentary called In Our Bones about our trip. And it's, it's a really raw and real look about our journey. Because I think it's really important to know that um, just because you're trying to prove people wrong doesn't mean you have to make it all look perfect. I think you can be very authentic in what you post online and you can um, 
you can you can accept the reality of what it is, and I think that's a big criticism of the millennial generation and the generation Z is that people think that we think everything is just perfect and it'll be easy, and I actually don't think that's true. I think because we're all so connected, we know the realities of this world. We know that things aren't easy, but we're that makes it even cooler that we're still inspired to go make something happen. And people also criticize and say, oh, you, you know, you think so much of yourself, you think you can make a difference, who are you? Um, but I don't think that's fair either. I think that's awesome that we think that individually we have the power to make an impact on the, wor on the, on the world. That's empowered, that's not self-absorbed. So I think there's a lot of things that we can, we can twist when someone tries to throw something negative about our age to it. I think there's always something good. And even, they're, and they're always going to say things about your age. Now, I'm 26 years old now, and now they're telling me that I'm too old to do things, or that my time has passed and I should be focusing on this. So they're, they're going to criticize you anyway, no matter your age, but I don't think that should stop you. Um, so back to Inner Bones, I was talking to a producer the other day that someone connected me to, and she was trying to give me some advice, and she asked, what's your plan for when the documentary's over? And I said, I want to try to submit it to as many film festivals as possible, and then try to get it on Netflix or Hulu. And she said, that's awesome. Why don't you try to get it on YouTube? And if you guys know anything about YouTube, which I'm sure that you do, um, you can imagine I was a little thrown off, and I said, um, do you just mean upload it to YouTube? She's like, yeah, that is, upload it to YouTube. Um, it's great. I was like, can't anyone upload anything to YouTube? She said, yeah, d do it. So, oh, okay, um, here's my documentary, and it's premiering on YouTube. Um, oh, I, could, I could try that, or I could try harder. What if I submit it to, to everything and try to get it on Netflix or Hulu? And worst case scenario, I fail, no one cares, and I put it on YouTube. But why wouldn't I try for the big one? Why wouldn't I shoot for the stars? Because if I miss, I'll land on YouTube. Um, which would be fine. So um, I just really want you guys to, to listen to the people that care about you, listen to good advice, listen to you know practical reasoning, but don't ever limit yourself or the possibilities you have for your life just based on your age or based on where you are or who you are. Um, yeah, just, just go for it. So I think let's stop telling each other no way when someone has an idea and say, cool, how? It's, it's okay to ask someone what their plan is. You can still support them and ask them to tell you how they're gonna get there, that's cool. So if your friend wants to dress in a girl cheese costume, tell them to go for it. If they wanna dress up like a cotton swab, check the weather report and then tell them to go for it. And then if, uh, if they say no, just do it anyway. So thank you guys for your time and good luck.